Hi everybody, this is the demonstration of the um, symbol MC9060 terminal with the Wavelink Telnet C emulator connecting to the MVSTK4 installation. This is symbol MC9060. As you can see, it runs Windows Mobile 2003 second edition and it has pre-licensed the Wavelink Telnet C emulator for the 3270 and 5250 series terminals. This is able to simulate or rather emulate 3279 model 2. Unfortunately, it cannot really emulate model 4. This is the quarter VGA screen, the QVGA resolution. So we will need to scroll it in order to see the whole screen. I have my TK4 installation now ready. This is connecting. This is connected using the Wi-Fi, and it supports standard B Wi-Fi. So old stuff here. It doesn't really work with the newer routers. There is some problem with it, but it still works with the older ones. I have already set up the configuration for the host, so I just hit enter and it's connected to the TSO. Here you can see the SNASO screen and we can scroll the screen horizontally to see the whole 80 columns. Vertically, there isn't much scrolling going on because this is emulating the Model 2 and not really the Model 4. By the way, this is a very small font. It's still fairly easy to read. But if I have selected any smaller font than this, it would be probably very hard to read. So this is probably the biggest uh, density of the data I can fit on the screen comfortably. And now it's time to log on to the TSO. And to do this, now you can see the SNASO screen. I press the escape and now we are in the logon prompt. I can either input my name from my uh, login from the keyboard or I can use this kind of barcode because this thing can scan barcode and I am gonna show you some application demonstration using the barcode. So I scan my Herc01 barcode. You can see it have input Herc01. I press enter. And now I have to input the password. And press enter. Now you can see that we are logged on. We have no broadcast messages. Scroll the screen to view it all. Press enter. We got some information. And now you can see that we are in a TS already prompt and we have an error. Why there is an error? This is because I have created my own TSO Apple panel and this is supporting uh, the Model 4 of 3279. And that's the problem because Model 4 is obviously larger. It has larger screen and it throws out an error because it tries to create the fields on the screen that are basically out of the boundaries of the screen supported by a Model 2. And this is why my TSO Apple panel is not really working here. Basically, it doesn't support Model 2 because it's designed for a Model 4 with a larger screen. And now let's see my application demonstration. Application written in a Brex as a inventory simple inventory control database. I have code to start it because it's more convenient to use the code than to input this manually. You can see that this has been input and I'm pressing enter to start the application. And you can see the, T you can see the panel running under TSO using Brex interpreter. And now we have to scan code of some inventory. So let's say this is contact S. It's used to clear the contacts as the name suggests. We have the barcode. Gonna scan the barcode. 
and here we go you can see that we have indeed scanned the barcode I'm gonna call this contact S this is the funky alphabetic keyboard not the QWERTY one and we don't want description location let's see let's call this uh, location A I'm gonna input just A to make this quick and we have one piece and now to save this I have to press this blue key followed by one which is the PF1 key of the terminal and as you can see that the record is saved and now we want to do the same thing with the contact U here we go contact U I'm taking my scanner holding the trigger and scanning the barcode and now we have the new barcode on the top and let's select contact U so instead of S we want to have U and the rest of the data is the same so I'm pressing PF1 and the record is saved and now let's say we want to have a silicon grease it's a teflon and a silicon grease silicon grease with a teflon also I use in electronics and I'm gonna call this silicon grease and the rest gonna be the same again so save this and we have saved this data now let's look at the web database so to do this we're gonna use the RFE which is the review frontend app that comes with the TK4 we use the blue and free key to go back and we are now in a ready prompt so we just have to input RFE press enter and we now can see the RFE and so we input 3.4 and as you can see I have to take my stylus because this needs some precision and let's select the data set it's basically the VSUM data set and this VSUM data set is used to store this data because we don't have the DB2 in a TK4 let's view this and you can see that we got some things not only the contact, the silicon grease but also some other stuff and now I'm gonna show you removing and reviewing the data using my app so let's go back and again we want to store the application so I scan the barcode that's the easiest way to do this and we're back in my app so I have my things right here and let's scan this spray so I'm scanning it and now just need to press enter and we are retrieving the data from the database as you can see this is contact U this is gonna be the contact S press enter and we have the data about this we got the Brunox which was previously input into the database this is a kind of oil and let's see what the database says about it 
and you can see that it shows this data. So let's remove all those products from the database. So we gonna remove the Brunox. To do this, we have to have the code, the barcode input, and use PF2, which is the blue end number two. You can see that the data have been deleted, the record have been deleted. And now we can do the same with the rest of the stuff. Delete the record and delete this record. And now if we want to check Runox, see It still says Brunox, I don't know why it should have deleted this data. So let's try it once again. I don't know why it have been why it haven't been deleted for sure. Let's see. The contact having been deleted as well. I don't know why this is happening. It shouldn't be like this. Maybe it still has the copy of the database in a buffer. So let's see what is going to happen if I get out of this and go back into it. This is something unexpected. Let's see if the, now it's going to see something about it. Yeah, you can see it says my stem. So this is actually not showing the data from the database. It's showing the variable name because the content of the variable isn't really existing. That's the reason. So it, it was deleted from the database and it, it was shown previously probably because there was some um, kind of buffering going on. And as you can see, we again have my stem one, which is the name of the variable and not the name of the product. So the records were successfully deleted from the database. I have to make some sort of a, a notification that the product is not in a database. That's going to come later because I don't like the way that it shows the variable name instead of message that the product is not in a database. So let's go back. And now let's go to RFE again to see this data. RFE. Press enter 3.4, no, not 3.04, but 3.4. And now let's go back into this again. View the data. And as you can see, we only got the test thing and P327, which is used for etching the copper. And as you can see, it works correctly. We have the database entries. And that is basically how it works. You can see that this is the key sequence data set. And the key is the barcode of the product. And now let's log off from the system. So let's keep pressing the PF3. Till we got into the ready prompt, till we get into the ready prompt, we are in a ready prompt now, and we just need to log off. And now we're back into the SNASO screen. So we're logged off. You can see the SNASO screen, and now we are ready to disconnect from the session. So we select options. Disconnect session one, name TSO, and we are disconnected. 
So the only thing remaining to do is just close the application and turn off the Wi-Fi radio. And now we are basically ready to turn off the terminal. Press the button. And that's all.